Welcome to the Experience of the Soul podcast with Cynthia Alice Anderson, a weekly show helping you grow, prosper, and evolve. Today, episode 321, Getting the Go Signal. And now, Experience of the Soul. Hello, dear friends, and welcome to the Experience of the Soul podcast. My name is Cynthia Alice Anderson. I'm the host. I'm so excited to be with you today, and I'm here in the studio with my producer. Good morning, everyone. Sean Kilgore here. So happy to be here with you again for another episode of the Experience of the Soul podcast. Today is August 12th, and we are on episode 321 of the Experience of the Soul podcast. And today, yeah, I know, right? We're talking about getting the go signal. So excited to hear uh, all about that. But before we get to it, as always, we want to do a couple of shout outs. Today, we are shouting out to a brand new YouTube subscriber that joined us this week, Miriam Purcell, uh, who has joined us as a subscriber. She has uh, liked and engaged with some of our, uh, some of our content and she's made some comments. So Miriam, welcome. And we're so happy to have you and thank you for, uh, for engaging with us over there on YouTube. Yeah, Miriam, great to have you. Always a blessing to have more people subscribe. And again, I always want to remind our listeners that anytime you do subscribe, it helps more like-minded people find us. So that's that's the cool part about it. It's not just about trying to get more subscribers. It's really about spreading this message of love, of hope, of growth, of spiritual principles, of prosperity. And so anyway, thank you for that. And welcome, welcome. We are yeah. happy to have you. Absolutely. Reminds me of uh, of a meme that's out there about supporting small businesses. And the, one of the yeah. ways you can do that without any cost to you whatsoever is exactly those things, is engaging with us on social media, subscribing on YouTube, liking the videos, sharing them. Um, all of that kind of stuff really helps, you know, spread the word, uh, you know, like yeah. RCA just said. So um, those things are, are super helpful and we super appreciate uh, all of those of you that, that do those things. Uh, we also just want to make sure you're aware that the soul works community is going strong and we are uh, yes, you know, hoping yes. that more of you will come over and join us there we have some great things happening over there including live monday night talks that include a a, a private a community share time um, yeah that's and a great meditation special. yeah it really is we're coming up on uh, number number nine i think will be our next one wow. So, yeah, I know it's like, it's going so fast, isn't it? And you look back on it it's like, I was looking back in our YouTube, uh, at our YouTube videos from when we started, we started yeah. together. I started with you at 301 and here we are at 321. So, I mean, it's just, just flown by. I um, know, like almost half a year. <laughs> I know that's, like that's crazy. Uh, to that's kind of hard. To, yeah. It's kind of yeah. hard to believe. Yeah. And speaking of shout out, Sean, I wanted to do one for you because I've, um, uh, heard from several people and, um, I can't even remember the last person that said this, but they were just saying, you know, I, we just love Sean. You know, we, <laughs> we thought we knew we were going to miss Dave and, but we love Sean so much and, and we still love Dave. I said, you get to love both of them. <laughs> and, 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 and yeah, and she was like, you know, his voice and it's so smooth and he's so natural and he supports you so well. So anyway, it, uh, so shout nice. out Thank to you, you, Sean. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. People, People have told me how much, you know, they love it. And that doesn't always go in the comments. So just want to make sure. And with I that, we also that. want to uh, mention too, Sean, right? Another shout out to, a, to listeners in a specific area. Yes. We're shouting out this morning to Toledo, Ohio. That was your cue. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Toledo, Ohio. And I do have some dear friends in Toledo. And uh, we, we always like to look it up you know, on the map and, and get a sense. And it's a sweet little downtown. I mean, it was, uh, uh, it's even smaller than Orlando, which is kind of hard. Yeah. Our, ba- our downtown is like two blocks, you know, <laughs> but I think it might be a little smaller, but, uh, the beautiful parks and outdoor areas. So to our listeners there, I hope you're getting out and enjoying all the natural beauty there as well. It is so beautiful. And we thank you for listening and we love to picture you, uh, in your home state listening. So, you know, definitely thank you for that. And yep. and speaking of shout outs, Sean, we, we had mentioned a couple shows ago that um, 
there was this, a special stone and I could not think of the name of it for anything. And I didn't have it right at my desk. And somebody uh, sent it to me who was listening from that area. So we were, uh, we were talking about the area of Kalkaska, Michigan, and I talked about the certain stone. And I don't know if we can put a picture in show notes or not, but did uh, I'm you not look- sure. I can put a link to it, though. And you if you're watching on YouTube, we've changed our background to the to a picture of the stone here. Yeah. So the Petoskey stones and basically they're only found uh around the shores of Lake Michigan and all those little dots and little things on them are fossils. And, uh, you know, people polish them and different things and, and, uh, they're really impressive and it's amazing. No two are alike. You know, there's in the picture Sean, that you're showing right now, there's only like what four of them and they yes, all yeah. look very, very different. And, uh, I just, I love that as a uh, tie in to our show about, us being really individual souls and yet all connected. So it's just, thank you, my friend. Thank you, Bobby, for, for reaching out with that. And she's one of our listeners right up there. So I loved that we were that connected that I couldn't think of something. And a listener goes, Oh, here you go. Here's what it's called. Here's what this means. And, and And I appreciate your, and here's (laughs) a picture. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. That's very cool. Yeah. Yeah. It's really, really, Yeah, we, we definitely appreciate that. That's a, it's a nice feeling to know, you know, to get that kind of immediate feedback to know that, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Because sometimes, yeah, well, you know, it's like, is there anybody out there? Is there anybody that, out there? There, yeah. there is. There is. It's one of the hardest things about this, uh, you know, this particular medium for me. I'm so used to instant feedback and I love people so much that I really enjoy church ministry and I love, you know, seeing people one on one and, you know, and in group settings, too. But what's nice about this is I'm reaching even more. It's just the hard thing is I don't get the immediate feedback. So that that little touch in from my friend Bobby helped me feel even more connected. So this and is And that's great. why, friends, if, you, if you're listening to us on any uh, any major podcast platform, again, in those show notes, the very first thing you'll see is send us a text message. We absolutely would love to hear from you uh, after you've listened to an episode. Let us know what you think. And it's real simple. You just, if you're listening on your phone, you just click that send us a text message. It'll open your text messages with, you know, and auto-populate the number that will go directly to us. So you can yeah. reach out to us directly and immediately uh, that way which I think is like, I really, I really get an immediate member when I sent myself one. Um, (laughs) yeah, yeah. yeah. So definitely friends don't make me have to send my own. That's sad. (laughs) That's just downright. It's just us sending text messages back and forth to each other. Back and forth to us. I love you, Sean. I love you, you, Sean. I love you, RZA. Okay. Did we do a good job? Okay. I guess we did. We heard from nobody, but okay. We, I guess we did a good job. Good episode. Good episode. It's probably the musician in us that likes clapping at the end. Where's right. my yeah, applause? Like, huh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, excited about today's show. The next couple of shows, friends, I want to just talk about before Sean gives the official intro again, is that um, I work with so many people right now, one-on-one. My counseling practice is basically full now, and I am putting out topics and and shows that are really related to the individuals that uh, I might be working with because there seems to be uh, a cycle, uh, a pattern. And what I like about that is that it shows me all of humanity is going through these things, not just one or two people I might be serving, not just 10 or 12 people I might be serving, but it's like this is part of the human condition. And uh, I hope these next two will, yeah, really support you. Yeah. And with that, I would love to just quickly mention we are in a really awesome series in our Monday Night Talks series, which you can join live every Monday night uh, by going to my.soulworkscommunity.com. You'll find a link to that in the show notes. And yes. this month, we're doing a series called Spiritual Spirituality in Nature. Uh, and each week is a, is a very cool and specific different theme. And so if you'd like to join us for those, uh, again, it's my.soulworkscommunity.com. And you can check the the show notes for a link to that. But yeah. For today, yeah. Go yeah. For go it. ahead. No. All, no. All I wanted to mention about the talks and Sean, you mentioned earlier. I love this because, like I said, it reaches so many people. But in the network, it's the opposite. It reaches fewer people right now, and but it's more personal. And so there is a paid subscription to get the talks. I want to just be clear about that. 
The paid subscription, though, is only $35 a month. And to get the kind of spiritual help and support and the emotional support uh, is incredible. And so after the message, there's always Q&A that's private. And then what we've created is in a meditation to end. And then we just all silently, as we click off, we go, uh, s- several people have said, you know, after that meditation, I just turn my light off and go to bed. I, that meditation takes me right into sleep. And it's such a genuinely beautiful practice for me on Monday night, starts my week off. So I just wanted you to get an idea, you know, a little bit more if you're unfamiliar and don't know about computers and all that, it'll really help walk you through. And it's super easy to use. And they're beautiful meditations and they are extended meditations. They go from anywhere from about eight minutes to 12 minutes in length. Um, yeah, right. And they're, they are really, you know, they're, they're deep meditations. They're, um, it, I, I promise you will get something out of it. I, I like repeating them over and over again because I do yeah. find that you get something different out of it every time you, uh, every time yeah. you repeat one. So yeah. So you just told me, thing. oh my gosh, that what that release meditation is every time I go in there, I'm releasing something yeah, else. Was, yeah. That's the idea. <laughs> that's the idea. <laughs> it's like you don't even some yeah. things you don't even think about and you're doing it again. You're like, oh, so that, that just came up. So okay. So now it's time to release that. You know? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. All righty. So, well, uh, yeah, you ready? <laughs> yeah, for today. <laughs> okay, Finally up so, to yeah. today. We've caught right. you up, friends. <laughs> Yeah, so here we are, officially welcome to episode 321 of the Experience of the Soul podcast, Getting the Go Signal. Yes. <laughs> I don't know why it makes me chuckle about that, Getting the Go Signal. So I've been working with so many of you about uh, how to discern, how to differentiate a path forward, what is the go signal, what is my ego. Um, I've been working with so many of you in the one-to-one sessions with um, really seeking to live the higher path and not wanting to waste time uh, choosing badly. And it's like, how do I know when it's time to move forward? And uh, I'll give you a a quick example and we'll get deeper into it. But I had a, a dear friend I was mentoring. This is probably about 20 years ago, and she was interested in, um, she was uh, in ministerial school, and she wanted to go out and start speaking at different churches. And in our one-to-ones, she said, what do I, what do I need to do? I said, I want you to hold in consciousness, praying. I want you to pray for these people. I want you to envision these churches. And I want you to just pray about God using you as a channel and as a gift to these people because you will be, but I want you to believe it first. So we worked, we worked at one-on-one and then she started her prayer work, you know, cause she was writing her goals, just exactly what you all are doing now with me, writing your goals down, uh, working that list, you know, going over and saying, what is mine to do now? Spirit, give me the go signal. Uh, you know, what do I need to release? How do I move forward? All, all of those kinds of things. And anyway, a couple of weeks later, I mean, it wasn't long at all. We're in a session and she said, oh my gosh, I have to ask you something. You won't believe what happened. And I said, what? I said, it sounds like good news. And she said, it is. You remember that church I wanted to speak at? Well, guess what? They called me to speak. And I said, well, what did you say? And she said, I told them I had to pray about it. I said, no, 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 no. You already prayed about it. This is the answer to your prayer. This is the go signal because the outer aligned with the inner desire. Hear that again, friends. The outer experience was aligning with the inner desire, and that was a great (laughs) go signal. So she goes, oh, yeah, right. So it was like, oh, yeah, I've been praying for it so long. I forgot I can just move forward. So I wanted to uh, do this topic, getting the go signal, so that you felt supported, number one, in your process, and two, so that you learn to discern what is ego, what is spirit. And amazingly, what I can tell you from my own journey and from working with others is that spirit even uses the ego, what we think of as mistakes, to move us forward even more. So this makes me super, super happy to bring this today because it's like nothing is wasted in the kingdom of God. (laughs) Nothing. 
Nothing is wasted in the kingdom of God. As you're seeking to do God's will, as you're seeking to uh, live a better life, as you're seeking to live from soul and live a spiritual life, you are going to be guided and spirit will help you in that guidance even when you make a mistake. So today is really about listening deeply to the inner voice. It is about a deeper discernment. It is also about helping you get a process uh, for reaching your goals and to know you're right on track. Um, the signal for the go, you know, the go signal, is it comes in a variety of ways. And I want to talk a little bit about those today. But the main piece I want you to think about is, am I living from soul or am I living from the personality? And I'm going to call it that rather than ego because in, excuse me, friends, admittedly, my voice is a little tired today and um, you may hear that, but all is well. I'm not sick or anything. It's just, uh, it's called living in Florida in allergy season. But um, I want you to think about Am I living from personality or soul? And the reason I'm using the word personality and not ego is that in psychology, ego is the self, right? And so somehow in spirituality, we demonize the self, but in what we're really meaning when we say ego in spiritual, uh, spiritual circles, we are really meaning the personality. In other words, the aspect of us that was created to get love as a child. So we're seeking to live from our heart and from our holy essence, right? That holy essence, our heart, it is the spirit of God. Some would call it the Holy Spirit. And we know it's individualized in us as our own soul, our own soul journey. So what we're seeking to do, if you're listening to this channel, somehow your soul journey has brought you here. And we believe that you're a soul that is designed to live a sacred life. We believe that God loves you, that God is both surrounding you every moment of every day and also indwelling you. We believe that Jesus the Christ showed us the way and is our master teacher, our way shower. And uh, I even love the word savior. In unity, that word is a little charged at this time, but that is because of how some modern day Christianity uses uh, Jesus to overly judge, criticize, and condemn. But in the early days of unity, our founders absolutely used that word and said often, we seek to prove what Christianity teaches. And what Christianity teaches is that God loves us, that if we are in God, if we are in Jesus, we are in God, and God is our source of all good. So in this process today, this process of getting the go signal, we are learning to listen deeply to the voice of the soul. You might hear me call it on it uh, often, I, I will say, listen to your inner guidance. Now, that inner guidance, I want to repeat, is uh, to, to learn to follow that inner guidance is uh, a process, it is a journey. But I want to help you discern between personality and soul and give you a few signals so that the discernment piece is easier. So the personality argues. It's always giving you lists and pros and cons. And the soul of you that is infused with the spirit of God that never changes, the soul of you knows. The scriptures say that you know, God is not in the earthquake, God is not in the fire, but God is the still small voice. And so that still small voice, I 100% believe is available to us. I don't think that God was just speaking to the prophets, to the people of the Old Testament, or even only through Jesus. I believe that God speaks to us every day through the language of the soul. So our work then is to listen deeply to our inner voice. And, and as we do that, we start to be able to more easily discern 
what that personality sounds like and what the soul sounds like. And it, interestingly, as a minister and in my private practice of counseling, the number one question I get is, how do I know the difference between my personality and soul? The other way you can know if it's personality or soul is, is it good for me? Is it good for me? Okay, now the personality is hearing, oh, anything I want. No, I didn't say, what do you want? That's, that's uh, rampant in our culture today with consumerism and everything else. Not what do I want, is it good for me? The soul is always going to know what is good for me. Our soul is connected to God, to eternity, and the here and now. So the soul knows things that the personality can't possibly know because the personality is rooted in, well, if I can just do it right, I can get somebody to love me. The personality is rooted in the limited mind. The personality is rooted in um, getting its needs met, you know, being seen. And the soul simply is. The soul knows. And the soul is the place of awakening. So as you begin to distinguish, to discern, uh, and by the way, uh, this was just a topic on a Monday night too, a few weeks ago. It, once you're able to more clearly discern, getting the go signal is even that uh, more, uh, it flows more easily and it's simpler for you because you've learned, how do I discern? Is it soul or is it personality? So one of the ways to discern, as I mentioned, the personality is always arguing and giving you lists and ba 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 ba. It's always anxious and frenetic. The soul knows. The soul knows. The personality wants to do what it wants. The soul wants to do what's good. The soul knows what's good, what's holy. And what I can tell you is, the choice the personality wants is always going to be to stay comfortable. The soul is ready to grow. So when it feels like you need God to move forward, that's how you know it's soul. If you say, I can't do this on my own, that's a very good indication that it is coming from the soul level. And friends, I'm amazed, at, you know, for as long as I've been studying this and as long as I've been practicing that it is almost comical how the personality will argue with what you know is yours to do. It'll come up with reasons. It'll say you can't do it. I mean, the self-talk and uh, what I ca often call inner assaults just, you know, uh, uh, really speed up. So when, when, you're, <clears throat> when you're moving uh, towards the soul, the, yeah, the personality is just going to go off. And you're going to go, well, maybe I shouldn't do it. Again, that is the personality because the personality fears annihilation, right? It's an aspect of the self that hasn't been healed and it fears that you don't need it. So anytime you start to grow on a deeper level, the personality is going to go, no, 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 no. Right? So you have to learn to discern, deal with that and listen more deeply. And as you do, as you start to listen more deeply, you, uh, you kind of move into a process of awakening to just how much God loves you. You start to move into a process of an awakening where you can say, yes, this is a go signal from God. Yes. So I want you to think about how are you making time to listen on a daily basis how am I listening for the voice of soul? In other words, how am I listening to the voice of God in and through my own soul, through my spiritual process? Okay, so time to be quiet and listen is number one. Time to be quiet and listen is number one. Then, I would say, if you were taking notes, this would probably be a 1A I didn't think about that till just now, but it'd probably be a 1A. How you start to discern and listen is you begin to ask questions uh, of God, seek guidance 
on really small things. Small things that aren't going to hurt anybody if you make a mistake. And I do it with very uh, 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 easy things like, okay, which way, I remember when I was first doing this, um, my guidance, I would ask, God, how do I go to work today? And whatever that guidance was, I would do it. God, what do I wear today? And I would do it. And what would happen is, like, uh, I did some of this during ministerial school, and I was, you know, just meditating, you know, thir 30 minutes in the morning, 30 minutes at night. I was in spiritual settings all day. I mean, it was just a really beautiful time in my life. And um, I would get the guidance. I'd put the clothes on, you know, and I would go into school. And, you know, you've got all these uh, intuitive people loving God, and they would often pick up on it. They would say, oh, you look great, or oh, you know, they would comment. And then um, sometimes I would wear something really old, you know, like the guidance was don't dress up, wear this, you know, don't get too attached how you look, you know. Anyway, I followed it to the T. And, um, and I would still get positive affirmation. Well, then I would get guidance for strange combinations. And uh, people, you know, weren't saying anything. And I thought, this is weird. Why am I not getting any feedback? What am I, what am I not doing? Is this, am I doing this wrong? And in my time of meditation, I took in that question. Am I doing this wrong? And it came through so clearly. You're not getting outer um, signs and affirmation because you don't need it. You've developed to the point that you can hear me and do it no matter what anybody else says. So it was like in the beginning part of my journey with this, with literally following my soul guidance, I needed outer affirmation. And then it got to the point with that particular aspect, I didn't need affirmation anymore. I still do that to this day. I still ask spirit, what am I to wear today? And I do it. It's crazy. It's crazy that it keeps me feeling that connected, but it does. Like one day I was doing this practice. This is about, I don't know, six or seven years ago. And uh, I, I distinctly remembered it because of who spoke to me about it. It was when I was the minister at Christ Church Unity in Orlando. And as I was asking for guidance about what to wear that day, um, I was really hit with an idea, and it was a very old unity idea. It's it said, and 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 it was like a quote that came to me in my in my time of prayer, and it was, um, "What you wear is immaterial." And I was like, "Okay," you know, and and it was like the voice said, uh, "Clothe yourself with the radiance of God." And I had remembered, it was like an old uh, statement, I think, from Catherine Ponder, uh, a unity minister. It was ordained in 1954. Anyway, so all the way to work, I did that affirmation. I am clothed with the radiance of God. I am clothed with the radiance of God. And I didn't have on any expensive clothing or I just had on my normal kind of minister get up. And this woman walked up to me really beautiful woman, and said, you look absolutely radiant today. <laughs> Friends, I, I cannot tell you how connected I felt with that. So all this to say, I want you to listen to the inner voice. I want you to start practicing discerning personality from soul. And I want you to practice doing what the soul guides you to do. Now, I also, you know, number two, if we were, if we were, you know, outlining this for you, if number one was listening to your inner voice, I would say number two would be looking for signs, especially if you're making a big decision, you don't want to, to move forward before it's good and ready. And before there are signs from the universe and by the universe, of course, I mean, God and, um, somebody, I heard somebody say one time, the word universe is not in the Bible. I said, well, God is all. God created all. If I say universe or God, God is all. God is the universe. So, uh, but it's true. God is not referred to in the Bible as the universe. But we also uh, love other religions. We honor 
other paths to God and that word universe helps us have an idea of God that's more expansive and not a guy sitting on a throne with a long white beard. Okay, back to the point. Number one was listen to your inner voice. Number two, look for signs. And and yeah, one A is as you start to listen, ask question of God and get guidance on the small things. Number two, look for signs. Signs from God, signs from the universe. And in other words, the sign will align. Remember what I said at the very get, beginning, this outer sign starts to align with your goals, your dreams, your intentions. That's how you are seeing it is things are aligning and that becomes the go signal. But as you're, as you're looking at the signs, you want to still pray for clarity, still pray for clarity. They are not hoping it's the right time. You know, um, it was interesting. Somebody asked me recently, um, I've, I've done a few different things in and around the Orlando area. and um, one was on a Wednesday night, one was on a Sunday night, and somebody said to me, were those uh, perfect failures? And I started laughing. I said, well, you could certainly call it that, but I wouldn't call it a failure um, because, uh, you know, I didn't continue either of those. But each of those connected me to somebody who I can really support on their journey and they're bringing something very special to me as well uh, in, in terms of friendship or spiritual uh, support. And um, those events reconnected me. And uh, those events were guided. And both events, uh, I did not have an attachment to it going forward. I said throughout, I am doing this because I am guided to do it. I'm doing it because people asked for it. And I said, I will show up. I have been guided to do this. It might be for a month. It might be for three months. It might be for a year. I serve as God directs. And when I knew it was time, the outer signs were there. And I made that choice. It was a hard choice because I love to support people so much. But what's interesting, I'm already supporting more people on the network. And that was the next guidance. So the personality looks at activities, looks at actions and judges and says, well, this is good. This is bad. This is a failure. This is a success in God. Those things look really, really different. So each step moved me forward in a way that my mind still doesn't totally comprehend how my soul was guided to do it, how people asked at that right time to do it, how all the outer signs were there. And I moved forward. Now, when the ego wants to attach and say, this means that, and that means that, well, that's in the personality self. But the soul absolutely knew why those things were moving forward. So I hope this makes sense. Um, sometimes the outer manifestation looks different than we think it's going to look, and it can still be us being right on track with our guidance. And friends, I don't mind being wrong either. So you know, I, I just look at these things with spiritual eyes. And if I'm listening to the inner voice, if I'm following, you know, if I'm, you know, uh, uh, following my guidance in the small things, if I'm looking for signs, praying for clarity, chances are I'm going to be heading down the right road, at least the right direction. And sometimes there are a few twists and turns to head the, the, the direction that we think, you know, there are necessary steps. So, but once I'm clear and I hear the go signal, then it's time to take action. Right. So, um, uh, uh, one of my spiritual teachers, Jane Elizabeth, uh, I remember when she first, when I first heard her say this, you all know what to do. You're just not taking action. And I think what, what, uh, separates the spiritual warriors from people that just want to go to church <laughs> is that spiritual warriors are ready to take action. Spiritual warriors are ready to move forward. Spiritual warriors are um, desiring to do the work of God in their lives and in the world, and they're looking to manifest good and holiness and sacredness as a part of their whole lot, you know, their everyday lives. So my hope for you is that you will work this, that you will think enough of yourself, that you will know that you're worthy.
to take time every day to listen to the inner voice, to go to God with something seemingly little to practice. Am I choosing soul? Am I choosing personality? And then once you start getting clear, look for signs for aligning that. You know, it's like, boom, yes, yes. And then I'm going to pray for clarity to make sure. And then I'm going to get the, I'm going to honor that go signal as things align and take action. What I know is that when we take action, the universe supports us. A way is made when there was once no way. And this is why I do the work I do. It inspires me and it lifts me up to watch people do this work on the soul journey. So my friends, this is my prayer for you. It's my hope for you. Get the go signal and take action. So thank you for listening today, dear friends. We're blessing you in Toledo. Thank you again to our new YouTube subscriber, Miriam. And as always, friends, we're honored to support your journey. All right. Blessings on the journey, dear friends. And we look forward to seeing you very soon. We hope you've enjoyed this episode of the Experience of the Soul podcast with Cynthia Alice Anderson, helping you grow, prosper, and evolve. This podcast is made possible because of listeners and viewers just like you. If you would like to support the podcast with your tax-deductible contribution on an ongoing basis or through a one-time gift, head on over to experienceofthesoul.com slash support. The Experience of the Soul podcast is copyright 2024, Cynthia Alice Anderson, all rights reserved, and is produced by Sean Kilgore. A production of The Soul Works Group Incorporated.